I'm going to talk about resource raising and uh, taxation. So let me uh, give the headlines of the three boxes, and then, um, as far as uh, to the extent that time permits, I'll fill up the boxes. Uh, initially, I said yes, you need resources and tax instruments to raise revenues, but why not use them, uh, these instruments, to redistribute uh, income to the extent that you can? So that's how things started. Then there was this realization that gradually started to dawn from the 80s that's well captured in what Milka Casanegro, who's a, a former uh, senior staff of the Fiscal Affairs Department of the IMF, said, in de developing countries, tax policy is tax administration. So uh, people said, we need to bother about whether taxes are administ administrable or not, and uh, what you call, we need to, to therefore uh, choose our revenue instruments that countries can administer. And I'll fill in these boxes, and what do I see in the future? Uh, what I see is that there are four forces that are going to shape further uh, change in what is actually a very innovative and dynamic industry, the tax, uh, the revenue design industry, and that is globalization, technology, the importance of fiscal decentralization for public services, and an increasing recognition that there is a great amount of diversity in fiscal capacities and fiscal administration, and I'll elaborate on those uh, to the extent that time permits. So let's start in the, with the first box. So initially, taxation, yes, yes, it's there, to, uh, the, you need to raise resources, but let's redistribute. So let's advocate a high and uh, 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 income tax with progressive rates, okay, uh, at high rates, and then we'll uh, get money from the rich, okay, and we, we can use that to redistribute to the poor. And not much thought was given to anything else. Okay, we need indirect tax, uh, taxes because we, we do need the revenues, but those aren't good taxes. And that high and progressive income tax rates would decrease uh, economic uh, efficiency and would foster a culture of tax evasion. That wasn't given much thought. That the rich and the political elite would not want you to tax them, so they would ensure that the, 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 your, rich, uh, your progressive rates did not actually turn out to be that progressive. Uh, not much recognition was given to that. Okay, so that was how things started uh, in the pre-80s. Okay? And then came this real, uh, gradual realization that no, you need administrable taxes. So let's tell you what the revenue instruments that were there. The first thing, thanks to the IMF, is that for most countries, though no one says for fits all policy was understood, there was a single rate value added tax advocated as the main revenue instrument. Okay, supporting members of the caste were income tax, uh, income taxes of course, but not at progressive rates, broad basis with few exemptions, low rates, and in some cases, not even a general income tax, but what they call a scheduled income tax, scheduled income tax, which is different types of income with tax differently, particularly, uh, particularly capital income sources. So equity out of the window, revenue raising uh, would take focus. Other important revenue instruments were uh, excises on sin goods like petroleum and, uh, and uh, alcohol, okay? Um, selective user charges such as on power and irrigation and um, uh, also some attention uh, paid to property taxes, particularly for local government. International ta uh, uh, the trade taxes and custom duties since the 70s have been on their way out due to the WTO and other matters. But that still left the experts bag uh, bulging a little more than before, but still very empty. There's no social security taxes, no payroll taxes, uh, no attention, that's still true of public finance textbooks or what we can call non-tax revenues. And not a rec uh, and very, almost no mention except in Musgrave's early work of a nice non-distortionary source of funds called senioraj. Okay, and these had to come in, but there was increasing attention to the importance of tax administration. So that's all I'm going to say about where we are today, but to point out that in the future, number one, the bag of revenue instruments is gradually being increased, particularly for non-tax revenues, such as auctioning of spectrum rights and sale of resource use rights and other, uh, other ways, and the using, uh, using a price discrimination theory for, ex uh, for excludable public goods to design these revenue instruments better. Okay, um, that's the first thing. Secondly, Fiscal decentralization is important for provision of, of proper governance and provision, provision of local public, sorry, local public services. 
And so you need to strengthen the resource raising capacity of local government. Okay? And that is the second thing on the agenda. The third is uh, compare uh, Singapore and Laos, two very different countries in terms of the fiscal capacities and the length of time for which they've been raising resources. You will have to ensure that taxes are within the capacity in Laos, but you can, ha oops, you can have a lot of sophistication in Singapore in designing your tax instruments. Okay? Uh, and finally, technology. Uh, uh, this technology is having diverse influences. It presents both opportunities and challenges. For example, to finance international government, there's uh, now a proposal out there. It's feasible to collect a Tobin tax technologically. So let's go ahead and try to introduce a Tobin tax. The new things call, uh, called bitcoins, so you can tax bitcoins. That's new revenue instruments. Then there is um, um, what technology does for the cost of tax compliance and tax, uh, tax administration. You can have electronic filing of tax returns. And that's feasible even in uh, some of the less, less developed countries. So that's reducing costs and making the tracking of information uh, more easy. The third is a big thing. The world is globalizing. And with that, uh, our financial flows, taxable financial flows. So that's creating opportunities and challenges. It's easier to uh, conceal money abroad. And unfortunately, politicians of many countries do do that. So they are not very happy to get increased international tra uh, transparency. But then on the other hand, tax administrations across the globe are getting better at sharing information and uh, sh sharing uh, this uh, enforcement, uh, enforcement uh, uh, methods. So that is uh, the other side of the coin. So international taxation is a big area that uh, pre pre uh, uh, presents a uh, uh, opportunities and increasing challenges. And my final point, uh, we can get data on different revenue instruments these days which we couldn't before. So our understanding of additional revenue instruments and how they should be used, there is a good hope that we'll understand them better, both in terms of the revenue capacity and, uh, and in terms of the political acceptability. And that's where I'd like to stop.